This conference will now be recorded. So today, um, you've got Bernard Nelson. I'm the owner and managing director of TST Training. Been around a long, long time. Won't bore you too much about it. But you can see a considerably younger and handsome more man, Adamaro Burton, who is the expert in this process. Uh, Adam, I will take you through really what the qualifications are today, what you'll benefit from them, how long they take, and really, you know, why you should consider taking these things. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Adam now, and uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll make the best of this, and we'll go with it. Adam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um... Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be part of this webinar and to be over here presenting to all of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope to do the best <laughs> and then that you can enjoy the content that we prepared to you. So in our agenda today, uh, we are going to cover uh, what it is the program and what are the main benefits to you, uh, some market uh, information, what are the target groups for each certification, for each training, and why you should consider to be attending one of the trainings and also the certifications that was created especially for you. So, starting with some trends and market information that are important for you to know. Uh, when we used to talk about uh, Agile, I like to go back in the past a bit because Agile was created way back then in the 90s. When few guys, they decided to come up with the manifesto, but during that time, they could never imagine the success that is facing today, the Agile and the Scrum uh, framework as well because they felt that waterfall at that time it was not being enough to them that they had to plan too much you spend too much time on planning but knowing that things would change in the end of the day and the process of change was too much complicated let's say to deal with and too costly and then they decided to create something that would be more smoother and more related to their daily activities. But also another thought that they had at that time, that they would create something that makes sense only for developers. Exactly. Only for the people that are coding software. But nowadays we can see that Agile is being used hardly only for developers but agile is being used for financial uh people for marketeers for many different target groups so the world embraced agile somehow and today we are seeing the success that this is being achieved and then of course they are super proud from the work that they created many years ago being recognized by the industry uh in the today's day but uh, not only from Agile and only from this history uh, makes the trends of the market because the, uh, as we are in a digital era that everything needs to be so fast. Of course, Agile as it was written over there in the past couldn't stay longer like that. So Agile evolved uh, during these years. And one of the things that became a huge hit in the market, in the market is about the scaling the Agile. What means to scale the Agile? Because, for example, if we are in a small company or if we are dealing with a small project, it's fine to have one product owner, one Scrum Master, and one, uh, in the Agile we call developer team, but I will call only a Scrum team, okay? Because I don't like to create restrictions uh, only for developers, because it's not only for developers at all. So we have one product owner, one Scrum Master, and we have one Scrum team. So based on this configuration, we can deal with a medium-sized project, we can deal with a small-sized project. But when we are talking about huge enterprises or huge projects, it's common that we need to go one step further and to search for some other solution that can feed the need of the project and also from the from the scrum itself 
So then it was created way back then, what we call the Scrum Office Scrums. This is when we start to scale up the Agile and the Scrum teams. Then we have like um, many more Scrum Masters, Project Owners, and many more teams working together. And there is a technique for this. However, Scrum Office Scrums became a, uh, a We need to give to give a new step further on this on this path, and then they start to pave the path by creating other methodologies and techniques to scale up the agile. That is mainly the scaled agile framework that is the safe. And then by using this, this became the norm. So if you look it up for different organizations they are not only using agile and scrum they are using agile and scrum and many times they are also scaling up the agile teams and this is something really incredible and this is a knowledge that is being required for any of the professionals that are working the market based on the agile or scrum or even both together so this is an important information later in this presentation i will go back to this point to explain why i'm saying this Okay, then the second point it is uh, always when something uh, come up to the market and start to become a heat, it's normal that many people would say, I master these competences or I master this knowledge. However, few of the uh, few number of the professionals, they are really mastering the techniques of a giant scrub because sometimes they, they can look a bit easy and which it is in parts but there are also many other complexities about cultural uh, issues about how to deal with multiple uh, scrum teams about how to better coach the team how to achieve the real value of the product or for the service how to better represent the voice of the customers that these are things that it's not only written in the paper you need to develop the competence itself and this is not something like uh, that i can read the book and then i'm ready to go you you need to be coached somehow by a trainer by someone else that knows what they are doing and the, how they are teaching you how to do that so this trend is still over there and is still going on and this is not going to an end right now that agile is easy to learn but hard to master and that won't change in the near future. So because of this, organizations they are being more sharp in selecting which people they are going to select to be part of their Agile or Scrum teams. So do not hesitate to learn uh, in deep the technique because otherwise you might be out from the selection and anything else related with this then the other trend that it's important it's about the deliver value products as the customer sees it uh, as i said before we are in the digital era and for the good and for the bad uh, then people nowadays especially the the young professionals that are entering the market they were born with technology uh, in the past we had to think about uh, like uh, how many servers we we would need uh, to support an application how much uh, hard drive space we would need uh, to accommodate a database how much uh, memory we would need to support like uh, the application and anything around this topic but later uh, the internet came up and then everything became huge and then everybody's connected. Uh, everybody can talk to each other in a qu uh, short uh, time frame. And then suddenly cloud computing became over there available to everybody. And then it was expensive in the beginning, but then became to be cheap. Now it's the common thing. Uh, it's pretty normal that organizations are using cloud and everything else. So technology became accessible to not only few people, but to the whole world. And these created somehow new users that in the past we were not user to face. Because for example, if I talk to my godson nowadays, he knows better about how to use the apps, YouTube and everything else around this than me. And of course, I studied like a IT, my background came from the IT, but still he's better than me. But 
how to support these people because their perception of value has changed completely. They don't value only what they are seeing, but also their whole experience uh, in the application or in the service or in the product that they are using, they are all in for the experience. So how can we deliver products that is valuable also to this audience? This is like a, one of the major challenges that we are seeing in the market right now. So because of this, to master, again, this is linked with the second topic, to master how to do this, this is going to be the great step that professionals need to give towards their career and to understanding Agile and Scrum. Because this is not going to help only on the projects, but in the general support, because this also covers the mindset about how to behave, how to provide information. So by understanding Agile and Scrum, you are not going to only run good projects, but also improve the support and communication at organizations for the customers. So when someone asks me, okay, so who are the audience um, for the Agile and Scrum? Usually my best answer is about to everybody. I don't see any kind of restrictions about having many different people with different backgrounds attending like a training class of a giant scrum. But many people also ask, okay, that's fine that it's to everybody, but can you put like an in short bullet points to whom I should offer this or to whom um, I should talk about or which professions should care about this most than others? Then I said, okay, so then here it goes. So then we have project man uh, managers, software developer, uh, business man uh, managers, IT service and management professionals, testers. We have many people from the IT that should be part of this. So it's not because IT support's not listed over here that they are not important, that they don't should go to understand what it is agile and how to behave based on on the agile mindset. They should, for sure. But if you ask me which uh, professions should attend the most, the agile training, these are my list, okay? But then, good to know about this, but let's talk about the benefits. Which kind of benefits can I achieve, can I have uh, in terms of organization or even my own career, when we talk about Agile, why I should bother about Agile? Well, I listed uh, the three ones that I judge that is the most important ones to you guys. The first one, that is accelerate products and service delivery. Well, I joined this Scrum, we support organizations to set up a fast pace on the development and delivery of working product and service with the main characteristics of both Agile Mindset and also the Scrum Framework. The main goal is to release something that can be used by the business according to its priorities. No more endless waiting like we used to have with the waterfall method. Probably many of you already used waterfall. I use many times. However, nowadays my own preference is about to use Agile. I could speed up many of my product projects by not only using only Scrum, but also the Agile mindset. Because for me, everything starts with the mindset. And nowadays, everything needs to be for today, not for tomorrow. So to speed, uh, to be able to speed up projects, it's a really good deal for business. In some ways and then the second one is about to enable a quick response to business needs so well before the revolution of the internet that i said before it was okay to kind of wait longer to get answers and to have the business needs fulfilled by the it however by leaving the connected world whereby everything needs to happen right now we can't afford anymore the waiting time the agile mindset enable the responsiveness not only for the teams that are working on the product or to the service but to everybody that is involved somehow in the product or the service and please also notice that all the time i refer to product and service because in the past a giant scrum was created mainly for products but it was expanded for services as well and then i bet that if i ask to any of you how many of you faced 
any kind of change at projects, probably all of you is going to answer me. Me, well, that's the that's the reality. I had to face many changes as well. So I keep thinking with myself why I should avoid the changings by knowing that the changes are going to happen. This is as right as anything else. So I know that doesn't matter which project I'm running or I'm managing, I know that something are, is going to change. So why I should suffer myself with that instead to embrace the change? So then Agile and Scrum will change our behavior towards the change. Instead uh, to avoid and to postpone the change, we are going to do the other way around. We are going to simply embrace the change and knowing since the day zero that things are going to change in our project. So uh, this mindset keeps, keeps me more relief, let's say, uh, to the projects that I'm doing because I don't suffer. Uh, and then also the management teams, uh, the senior managers, usually they are more happy with the results that can be produced by knowing that I'm not spending time with items that it's going to be only discussed in the end of the project, but in the beginning of the project. So it's good to create the right focus on the projects and this can save much time and much resources at the organizations. And then when we talk about companies itself, but only looking for companies, well, this is something interesting. Well, over there, I listed four different points to you that I'm going to better explain. When we talk about enhanced ability to manage changing priorities, this is going to allow the professionals to better focus on the business and the customer needs itself. So instead to think about only in terms of what I think is important, then we're going to switch off to what the customer wants, what the business needs. And this is an important uh, shift that we need to make in our daily activities. Then increase the product, uh, productivity and visibility of the projects. Teams will develop the, what, what I like to call the togetherness. And this is a feeling that needs to grow and needs to be there in a daily basis for every single person that is working in a company, especially in, project, in projects. Because doesn't matter what, they are going to work together. So they need to build up some new future together. They need to um, surpass their customer expectation. And the only thing, the only way about how to do it is about to work together, but in a togetherness way because we cannot say for example that i'm going to own to make only this part or my co-worker is going to do only the other part everybody is responsible for everything there is no me you there is only us and this is an important aspect of the agile mindset because in the end of the day it's my third point we need to exceed the customer satisfaction and if you go back to the point that i said that nowadays we have the the techie uh, and digital people entering the workforce, then we are talking about a new layer of uh, expectation that needs to be satisfied somehow. So please be my guest by embracing this change as well and adopting the agile mindset. This is going to make your life more easier and for the companies as well. And then one of the major complaints that usually business complain uh, or they list as being one of the most uh, priority that needs to be solved in a short period of time is about to improve the business and IT alignment that sometimes CEO says, well, uh, the business is going to this direction, but the IT is going to the other direction. Many times, many frameworks try to succeed on this, but sometimes they failed really hardly. So by working together and creating the togetherness, so then this is going to make it more easier to improve the alignment. I cannot promise that Agile and Scrum is going to solve the whole corporation problem, but it's going to reduce dramatic, dramatically uh, the issues between, uh, between business and IT uh, communication. So these are, for me, one of the most important benefits for organizations itself. So when we 
establish the program. So, of course, we always take into consideration uh, how uh, the training providers, they are going to be able to put this in the market and succeed with that with the candidates, because in the end of the day, are the professionals that, are, that need to succeed. They need to be feel the readiness uh, to go to their organizations and then do their best and put this in practice. So when we first thought about how to create this program, we discussed it extensively about, okay, shall we create a program only focused on the agile or only on Scrum? And after many considerations and surveys in the market, we decided to create a program called Agile Scrum. You can notice that like uh, the program itself is called Agile Scrum. It's not because I'm talking about uh, both together that uh, they are apart or different exams or trainings itself. Uh, why we decided to do this? Because if you go back exactly to the oranges of the Agile and the Scrum, Agile is the mindset. Scrum are the practices, roughly saying. So what, how me as a professional, I can go back to my organization only knowing the mindset, but not the practices. Or how do I know the practices without knowing the mindset? How can I behave well with that? So then we said, mm -mm, better to put together. So then we've created the only agile scrum program in the market uh, that's going to facilitate a lot for the professionals because you are going to understand not only one thing, but both together the mindset, behavior, and also the practice. And of course, uh, how can we guarantee that you can go back to your organization and then put this in practice? So then we created what we call practical assignments. There are many practices that you need to that you need to run and you need to succeed in the classroom uh, before proceed for examinations and also to leave the, uh, the classroom. And then by doing this, we are providing a new extra information and uh, competences for the candidates, professionals, uh, to succeed uh, in their careers. And then also, as the, the program has different levels, we have like a flexible entry because if you are well experienced already in the Agile Scrum field, so then you can go directly to the advanced models. But if you say to me, yeah, I don't know much, so then there is the foundation level. So you can decide about which uh, level is the most appropriate to you. And then I'm going to provide some insights to you still in this presentation today. And then, uh, as we know that we live in a global world, so we know that sometimes, uh, for example, even myself, I'm talking, presenting this in English to you, but English is not my native language. And sometimes, especially for exams, many people prefer to do in their own language. So the exam is also available in, in different languages. So then you need to consult which languages are available to, to see if match your needs. But honestly speaking, for examinations, as we use loads of terms in English, I have my personal preference to do in English. But uh, everybody can decide by themselves. And when we talk about trainers, we also, of course, consider the trainers, uh, what's going to be the, the benefits for the trainers itself. And for the consultants that are in the market, because we know that many of the professionals that attend the training courses, they would like to go back to their, uh, to their field with many different tools to put in practice at their organizations. And then, of course, they're going to be able to promote cultural change at organizations. They will, they will learn how to put in practice the most used agile techniques they're going to be able to deliver trainings with a practical approach that this is something that we take really serious, that we don't like, that you go for a training class and then you don't know how what to do later. And then, of course, they're going to be certified in the most uh, successful uh, Agile Scrum program. And then, why Agile Scrum certification? I have some important points for you over here. The first one, and I said that before and I'm going to repeat it because this is really important. It's the only program that provides both practice, Agile and Scrum. And as I said before, Agile is about a mindset and Scrum is about a practice. And if you don't know both together, probably you, you are not going to benefit as most as you can. And then you are going to be able to increase the efficiency in products and services delivery. 
increase the customer satisfaction by delivering value products and services. Uh, Abel in my slides listed uh, 30,000 certified candidates, but as we speak, uh, this number is already 40,000 certified candidates, or even a bit more, uh, with in more than 60 countries and five continents. Uh, the exam and the training is based on the well-known uh, Scrum and Agile practice, so there is no difference. So it doesn't matter where you are located, uh, in which part of the world, you are going to learn uh, exactly the Agile and the Scrum that is being used in the global, uh, in the global, in a global scale. Sorry, uh, we don't have any kind of uh, language barrier. Sorry, just a second. And the exams are based on uh, real scenarios. And this is something that I really enjoy because even when you go for the exams, you are going to face practical questions. So you need to really understand and you need to master before to go to the exams because we would like to see you succeeding and not failing when you go back to your organization and putting everything in practice. And then, because of this, the, the practical assignments, the exams based on real scenarios, the training that you need to receive, uh, we are going to increase the ROI to, uh, for the organizations because they are going to invest uh, in their, for their employees to get the best as they can, and then they're going to create um, more uh, efficiency to the, uh, at the project, so they're going to reduce the project time, they're going to increase the customer satisfaction, they're going to create new solutions, so then uh, this pays off, let's say. And then the program is aligned with the independent and global competence framework, that is the ECF, the ECF is the European competence framework. And then what are the models uh, from this program? The program is divided in three different models. The first one that we have is the Agile Scrum Foundation that is going to test uh, the, your knowledge and understanding on the main terminology and core principles of Agile and Scrum. So if you ask me, if you are not willing to become a Scrum Master or a Product Owner, you, you, you are a member of a team, of a Scrum team, so which certification is the most recommended to me? Agile Scrum Foundation. If you don't know anything about a giant screen, this is going to be your first step towards this new area of knowledge. Then a giant screen, it's fully recommended to you as well. But then, if you are willing to become an Agile Scrum Master, so then go for the Agile Scrum Master. But however, attention, if you don't know anything about Agile Scrum, please go first to the foundation to later go to the master. And then, if you are more business likely person, so like me, for example, I would go for the product owner because I'm more business. I'm not a tacky person at all. I can be the voice of the customer, but I'm not a tacky person. So the product owner is the voice of the customer, is the business side of the Agile Scrum. But again, uh, if you don't know anything about Agile Scrum, first foundation, then later product owner. And then, of course, there are many, many people, many professionals that I've met along these years that they are both, they hold both certificates, Agile Scrum Master and Agile Scrum Product Owner. Why not? If this is your desire to really master everything around the agile scrum so then of course you can go for both so then uh there are um some um uh some areas uh, knowledge areas that we call or topics that are covered in each exam uh for the foundation we cover the agile way of thinking the scrum practice the scrum planning and estimation monitoring scrum projects and advanced scrum concepts as a foundation exam, this is composed by 40 multiple questions and you need to achieve at least 65% and then the exam has a length of 60 minutes. But please do not understand that this is like a, a really simple exam because it's not. And then we have the Exceeding Agile, uh, BCS Exceeding Agile Scrum Practitioner uh, that is related to the Scrum Master. There is a three-day training that covers the Agile way of thinking, the Scrum Master role, Agile estimating, planning, monitoring, and control, complex projects that over here. Uh, remember my first point that I said that one of the most things that are being used uh, in the 
agile in the scrum is about to scale up the um, the teams, the agile and scrum teams. Over here in this topic, a complex project, so you are going to learn how to scale up your team. So that subject it's fully covered over here. So by attending your training over here, you are going to be ready according with even with the the trends of the market. That is our concerns already uh, as well. Sorry. And then the exam, also 40 multiple choice questions. But over here, then you need to show off that you really understand. So the questions over here uh, are in the bloom level of four and five. So you need to really face, you are going to face really scenario based questions that you need to really understand what it is about and then select the, the, the correct answer. So it's not an easy exam. And then the, the minimal uh, pass rate for you to be approved is 65% as well. And then for the Scrum product owner, then uh, we cover the agile way of thinking, uh, the product owner role, uh, managing the product backlog, complex projects, and adding value. Uh, but over here also, you are going to understand how to scale up, but also how to scale up your product backlog mainly this because this is one of the main tasks of the agile scrum product owner and how to add value to the business and to the customers the exam also it's 40 multiple choice questions scenario based 90 minutes and then you need to achieve at the least 65 percent so then uh, i told you before that i'm going to provide you some insights about which course is the right for you so here you go so if you will play a role in a, in a agile or a scrum team development testing designing or infrastructure or processes uh, then foundation is the one for you but if you are going to take over the scrum master role so then we strongly recommend the foundation and then the prediction is the one for you but if you are going to take over uh, the role of product owner, so then foundation and then product owner. You would like to be uh, to represent the customers or business and define its priorities, foundation and also product owner. You are an IT service and management professional that would like to incorporate agile aspects in your organization process, so then foundation. So now I'm passing the floor to Bernard, please. Adam, that's very, very uh, inclusive. Thanks very much for doing that. So essentially, um, the scheme has been designed specifically to blend Agile and Scrum together and to help you and your projects that you run. Uh, the BCS Exin and THG who are offering this program. We're all internationally recognized for delivery of excellence, so please come to us. There is a defined career role for you, and the scheme has been incorporated into our long-term test engineer development program, which if you haven't seen, the newsletter is going out next week, and you will see it then. Essentially, it's a well-thought-out scheme, which many thousands have passed the exam. However, don't think you pass the exam just for turning up. There is a lot of hard work to do on this, and that needs to be taken into account. Last thing I want is it's just people to get a certificate for turning up because it doesn't prove their prove their knowledge and how well we train them. So it is hard work. Be prepared for it. I'll unmute people if you have any questions, or you can send a send a text now to Adamar. Let's um, let's see what you want to do. Does anyone have any questions, please? Guessing not. Okay. Thanks very much for attending, everybody. Adamar, thanks very much indeed. Um, we'll catch up later, but in the end, um, I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody, and hope you'll see our timetable in our newsletter, uh, which uh, shows you more about this program indeed. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank you.